Welcome back to Facebook Live streaming behind the scenes at the 2016 Food Tank Summit here in Chicago. My name is Alia Dalal. I am a local chef and the host, um, the guest host of Chicago's Best on WGN. And sitting with me right here is Juliette Majot from the Institute for Agriculture and Trade Policy. Um, and so Juliette, you just finished speaking on a panel about transparency in the food system. Um, I'm curious if you can just kind of catch us up with that conversation or um, let us know a little bit about what you spoke about there. Sure. Um, I think the most important thing is thinking about the food system is not something that sits outside of the rest of our society or outside of the, the political system that we're in. Um, it's something that is greatly affected by our economy, by our international trade agreements, um, by the kinds of decisions that we're making in a post-election time. I found this morning that it seemed that um, I, you would be surprised to know that we were just after an election. People didn't talk about it. Uh, people didn't want to talk about what the ramifications might be, whether or not they were Clinton supporters or Trump supporters. What does this kind of change mean? for the food system, for the food system that isn't just a US system, it's an international system. It's a system that has to do with feeding people um, here, um, with the local farms that are feeding people abroad, with small family farms, with medium-sized farms, with large-sized farms. What does transparency mean for all of that? And I would argue that transparency is not limited to whether or not we have a GMO label, or to uh, where our food comes from, or what is in our food. Transparency has to do with the, uh, with the provision of intelligent information, with analysis about what kinds of systems we have, with participation in those systems, with access to that information. Uh, transparency is about how we behave as a democracy. And that is the kind of big thinking that I think the food movement has an incredible opportunity to tap into um, and to understand and to be extremely powerful politically, economically, socially. Awesome. Could you give us maybe um, an example of that? I mean, I know we're talking about giant global systems, so it's you know hard. I think sometimes the reason it's easier to talk about something like food labeling mm -hmm. in a panel is just to to get um, you know get into the nitty gritty a little sure. bit and talk about action. But I'm curious, um, especially with your background, if you could give us. Um, maybe a more specific example of, sure. of a change that, that you're hoping or working for. Sure. Um, let's, for a moment, talk about trade policy. We've heard a lot about trade policy in the, in, during the mm -hmm. election. Um, we've heard about it on a very, very superficial level. But let's just take an example of what a current trade agreement, the Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement, would do if it was passed in the way that it's been put together. Uh, many people um, know that in the United States there are special procurement programs in food, for food purchasing. Um, and those procurement programs allow people to say that they want to have food that is grown locally, for example. That's a decision that a community is able to make. Under a, the kind of trade agreement like the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement, um, that would be considered a barrier to trade and therefore could be against the rules of a trade agreement and therefore could be disallowed in America to make those kinds of decisions. And that's just one little point of uh, where you can see very clearly how an agreement about which we know very little because it's a secret agreement, it's covered by the national security um, rules, um, how an agreement like that could actually lead to an inability for us to do the most straightforward types of decisions around what kind of food we want to procure and from whom um, is something that could be threatened. And that's why, that's why it's important for us to be able to challenge those kinds of agreements, to help people understand what's in them, for people to understand that these are not just about trade, they're about regulation, they're about environment, they're about social justice, and we just need to dig about that far into them to be able to see what's there. 
they're they're uh, they're not impossible to understand and they're very fascinating. So awesome. if you're just joining us now, I'm speaking with Juliette Majot from the Institute for Agriculture and Trade Policy. Um, so I have to ask about about the prop that you're holding. Oh, we're, sorry. we're TV, we're video, so we love the visuals. Um, what are you holding in your hands right now? Well, speaking about transparency. Um, another area of transparency that is incredibly important is transparency in science. Transparency in the kind of analysis that comes with science. Uh, transparency for regulators who are trying to determine um, whether or not something should, say, be able to go to uh, scale as a commercialized product. Um, I brought with me, and I'm just going to show you one page of it, an application to the Environmental Protection Agency um, that is related to the commercialization of organisms that are related to commercializing bio, bio um, synthetic biology. And, and Synbio is a, a very complicated area of science. It does not fall under a lot of regulation right now. Um, and so we're very interested to see what people who are working in that area um, are saying to the APA in order to commercialize their products um, and everything that's contained in their products. Um, this is one page of that application. You see that it's entirely redacted. Um, there are about 60 pages that look very, very similar to this page. And remember, this is the application that goes to the Environmental uh, Protection Agency um, to be approved for commercialization. Why is it redacted like this? It's redacted like this because the information contained um, is, being, is being justified, this, redac this redaction, because the information contained is considered to be of commercial importance um, and therefore is being protected by the person and, and the company that is applying for this permit. Um, that means that commercial interests override scientific interests. It means that EPA scientists have nothing on which to base a decision like the one that we're looking at here. Uh, and it's a whole different level of transparency uh, in the ability of any citizen to be able to trust um, what is approved by our regulatory agencies and what is disapproved by our regulatory agencies, or to be able to have any sort of really legitimate insight about um, what regulations are good and what regulations are unnecessary. Um, the, the discussion that we've been having in the United States over regulation has, has been broken down into people who say I'm anti-regulatory or I'm pro-regulatory. It is, like many of the things that we've heard in the last election, a ridiculous way to, to uh, break up a conversation, a very meaningful conversation, about the role of government and about the role of the public sector and the role of the private sector. All of these things come together in precisely this kind of a document um, that tells us nothing except for the fact that it's being insistent about telling us nothing. Mm. Um, and maybe just one, one final question. I think one of the really um, fantastic opportunities today is that in your panel, in addition to the other panels today, um, you and others had the opportunity to, to speak with real leaders, whether it be in policy or food companies, farmers, um, but I was, I'm curious if you have any suggestions for more like those of us at home who, who see something like this um, and obviously we had an opportunity um, this month, you know, I know a lot of people know voting is a, is a great sure. way to make your voice heard. Do you have any suggestions um, for maybe like one or two things that people at home could do if they're curious um, or interested in fighting for more transparency in our government? I think the strongest thing that people can do is to cite the lack of transparency as something that is anti-democratic by nature. Um, we know, we heard when you looked at a map um, of the election that we just had. We saw a breakdown that, that in some ways, I think, uh, does not tell us the story that people think it tells us. We saw a map of rural America voting in one direction and a map of urban America voting in another direction. Um, and I urge people to think about what does that map actually tell us? It doesn't tell us very much. Uh, it doesn't tell us why um, we saw a very, very frustrated part of our, um, of our country um, saying, you know, people in rural areas have been um, treated badly, we are suffering, we are hungry, our agriculture has been decimated, our family farms have been decimated, our roads are a mess, we are having to deal with climate change, we are having to deal 
with resilience. We are having to deal with our infrastructures falling apart. Um, and we want to change. And I think that that message, what kind of change uh, is important for rural America, is something that we need to get very, very close in touch with. Um, so I would say have those hard conversations about what it is we don't know about the decisions that are going to be, that have been made through this election process. Challenge, um, go to your Congress people, go to your local representatives, go to your school board meetings, everywhere you can, and simply uh, assert your right to know and the importance of that for a democratic system. The first thing that people can do, and you can do it right now, um, is to let your representative know right away um, that you don't support something that you don't need to know an awful lot about, the Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement. Um, it, it's fine. Let them know. Don't vote for this in a lame duck session. We just, we've just elected, you know, a whole new, new array of people for our government. Let that group of people decide what's going to happen with our trade agreements. Let's not use uh, the lame duck session to keep more things secret, to keep more things uh, below the table, to make very important and long-reaching decisions um, that, as a democracy, we should be much more involved in making. So go ahead, take a stand, come to the IATP site, we can tell you how to do it, um, and know that it's okay to demand to know and then to do something with that information that you do now have in your hand. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, we are doing interviews behind the scenes here at the 2016 Food Tank Summit in Chicago. We'll be interviewing panelists and speakers all afternoon long, so be sure to check it out on the Facebook page at food, um, for Food Tank.